right now in the studio with me is a cat that's been part of the revolving door for a minute <laughs> and uh, has uh, produced a lot of bright moments. Uh, you know, every now and then I have to go out there and watch excerpts of a, uh, a young man that uh, hung out in the studio with us, um, Mr. Uh, Van Peebles. Oh, the Mel Van Peebles. That was the last <laughs> time I was in here. So that was, man, that was a minute that ago. It was a while ago. But I just saw, we were talking about Melvin Van Peebles when he, he, he came uh, in the studio and performed with uh, laxative, laxative, yeah. and uh, yeah, that was that was amazing. I just saw him la two weeks ago. He was at Urban World Film Festival, okay. and they were sh screening a film that he did called Blackout. And he, you know, he was there smoking a cigar. I mean, still the same MVP, you know. So, well, so definitely come getting that. And I wouldn't be surprised if he he came down here again and did a show. But that that was an amazing time. Yeah. yeah so, so again. In the studio with me right now, uh, Mr. Mike Dennis, a uh, filmmaker here in the Philadelphia area. And, uh, you know, it seems like every time I, I see you, either you're filming or you're going somewhere to film. Uh, you know, yeah. it's like you're, well, you're... Well, yeah, it's about capturing the culture. I, I have to, I'm trying to get, like, I'm, I'm so jealous. You, you got that, that soft, sultry jazz radio voice you is know, that they, what it is well they uh, they have me on on another station you can mention the station it's all good w man. wrd you know with Ste stephanie, stephanie renee. renee is like family you know she yeah. that probably one of the first times that she hosted radio was right here with me oh get out so yeah, yeah well she put me on so i guess it's like paying it forward so we're on every friday morning but it's a whole different energy because i gotta like wake up like keep people alert like because you know but like this 11 o'clock at night you gotta it's, Keep people just yeah. Like that was a smooth sound. Chill into the weekend, man. That was the smooth sounds of Hannibal <laughs> <Lukumbi. laughs> Mike and Dennis. Now next we're gonna get into weather report. <laughs> You know, I'm gonna take your job. It's I mean, all good. Uh, does it pay? That's that's the only uh, question. Well, we'll talk off air on that. <laughs> okay. Right. I'm going because I don't uh, need any more free jobs. You always see me walking plenty around. Plenty of those around. I'm always well. I'm always fun, but it's about capturing the culture. It's about go. being a. And I guess the the reason I, I'm I'm really appreciative that you, you have me here tonight, just to let your listeners know that we're we're about to kick off our just as you hold doing, on to that. Don't do it yet. We're not. We're gonna pause briefly for the ID, and when we come back, we we'll start. ID? We'll okay. start getting all, all right, that out. Pause now for the ID. <laughs> so Michael Dennis is in the studio. Uh, for those that may like have just caught a few minutes of Mike Dennis and they want to find out who this guy is, where should they go to find uh, him? Well, you know, I run a company. My company's called Real Black, R-E-E-L-B-L-A-C-K. And um, you can go at Real Black on any of the social media platforms and on uh, meetup.com, YouTube. Uh, realblack.com you'll you'll see probably a picture of me doing something silly and information about what we do outstanding so we're going to be back in about 30 seconds keep your dial locked right here you may indeed find something that you like stay close and we are back and uh, once again we're very fortunate to have uh, filmmaker Mike Dennis in the studio with us and as as you started to say before we went into the ID this is a uh, a significant year a signature year um, for you and, and what you do. Yes, yes. J. Michael, yes. We, yeah, it's uh, 2003. We started doing a screening series at the, it started at the Prince Music Theater, and then we moved over to the Sedgwick Cultural Center, and then we moved over to International House. We were there 10 years. And now, if you do the math, uh, season 15 starts at the Bank Building, which is at the corner of 38th and Lancaster. So we have, it's basically every second Friday I'm programming a film show that's related to black culture and it's a lot of fun because uh, you know it's, it's community oriented space it's pay what you want and um, I get to show whatever I, I feel like you know pretty much and the last few shows I said like the last six or eight months we've had a lot of really cool surprises because it's uh, it's getting you know film is one of those things where people feel like they, they should get it on demand but, you know, as you know, uh, we want people to have experiences. Sure. So this coming Friday, a week, a week from tonight, uh, we're going to be showing, as our season 15 kickoff, a movie called Sweet Love Bitter, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Well, I, I'm a huge Dick Gregory fan. 
Yes. Yeah, um, you know, the the late great Dick mm-hmm. Gregory. Yeah, rest and in peace. Uh, you know, I'm a huge Charlie Parker fan. Mm-hmm. So so they, they work well together in my opinion. Yeah, so for uh, for those who don't know, Sweet Love Bitter is like sixty five or so. It's a m- independent film. Actually I found out it was shot here in Philadelphia. Really? Yeah, um on Sansom Street. Wow. I'm not sure if it was East or West, but it was shot here in Philadelphia, and it's uh, based on John A. Williams' book called Night Song. And uh, it's basically uh, Dick Gregory playing a character called Eagle, which is hugely inspired by Charlie Parker. And Don Murray uh, is a young guy who's got a habit, and they become friends, you know, so it's one of those things where... They they kind of help one another and there's you know uh, you know typical catharsis of the white character kind of thing but it's Dick Gregory's only starring film role and you know Bob Dick was very hugely important to the growth and success of Real Black uh, about two years ago we started filming interviews with him and a few of those went viral including the Miles Davis mm-hmm. thing which I know a lot of people in your community really like. You know, Nicholas Payton, a lot of people shared that and it caused a lot of conversation. So, you know, in tribute, we want to we want to show Sweet Love Bitter and it's at 715 on Friday the 13th. And uh, again, the location 3750 Lancaster, the bank building. Basically, the corner of 38th and Lancaster and West Philly. And you, you said it's uh, folks can essentially donate whatever, whatever you want. If right. you, you know, it's really about the experience. I mean, okay. like I, as I look back at, at 15 years, I've, I'm, I'm always running into people, and you know, I either see them like they were at the last show or they haven't been to a show in several years. But so, so they don't have to RSVP or anything like that. No, okay. no, no, no. I mean, there's plenty of space, you know. And uh, the the so the added thing, not only do you get to see this with a a group of people but after the movie I'm going to share interviews that I shot over the years uh, about the making of the film so mm-hmm. we have footage that's never been seen before Dick Gregory talking about acting in the film I have an audio interview with Don Murray who's still alive you know he's 86 I think and uh, he was also in a movie a TV show called The Outcast mm-hmm. and he's also in Falcon Crest and a lot of a lot of things very veteran actor uh, nominated for an Academy Award for his very first role in Bus Stop opposite Marilyn Monroe. So I'm already jealous. This guy got to kiss Marilyn Monroe. But uh, we talked to him and he shared his experiences. And then I just came back from New York last week and I I met with Woody King, who has a small part in the film and was also Dick Gregory's acting coach. And he's got a gazillion stories. I'm not sure how I'm going (laughs) to chop him down about working on that film. It was basically his first credited screen role. And he's got a lot of fond memories about it. So, you know, in tribute to Bob Dick Gregory, we're going to do that Friday the 13th at the Bank Building, 3750 Lancaster Avenue. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of you know, funny, like, because there's, like, parts in that film when uh, Dick Gregory has shades on and a little mm-hmm. hat that he looks like, you know, uh, Monk. He looks like the Lonely yeah, Monk to me in, in, in the film. But, uh but yeah, no, that's that's really cool, um, and, and you know, and again, man, let me say congratulations. I appreciate it Thank because you. you've been grinding for a minute. Well, back back at you. I mean, you know, like you know, I definitely feel. Well, I, I guess uh, driving up, I feel old. <laughs> like nobody's gonna mistake me for the thirty-three year old person. I'm, but I'm right at that age where, like, young people look at me and like, wow, you're really old, man. <laughs> And then older people look at me. You ain't got nothing, you know. You, you, like I'm like not, anybody, not. like you know. Just so so I can't. I have no. I have no right to complain. I can't. I just feel, yeah. Like we've been putting in the work and and um, giving people a lot of memories. So we want that to continue and and hopefully, you know, fifteen more years. But I'm also getting a little antsy, running the candy store, you know, for fifteen years. I, I feel like I wanna. You know, like maybe I'm, I'm, maybe I should be making these candy bars. You know, I know what the people want. Okay. So, so that'll be the next thing. You, you're gonna start in f- season 15. In addition to some of the legacy of other filmmakers, like I'm hoping that we can get Melvin Van Peebles. He made a movie about 10 years ago called Bellyful that's never been shown here in Philly, and, and I've been talking to him about showing it here. Okay. And uh, But also I have a few movies that I've started that are in the can that I haven't finished, so hopefully season 15 will be the impetus to get that uh, Leon Ware documentary out, and God willing, you know, the Five Spot documentary, but, you know, that needs to be, that's a very special thing to me, so, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that may mm-hmm. not happen 
in the next 12 months, but certainly the Leon Ware piece. Well, as you as you celebrate this uh, this 15th anniversary, um, you know, uh, you, you the season starts this Friday. How long does this run? We, well, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, we 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 call the season. It's generally, we we sell memberships also that helps keep me from robbing folks. Uh, you know, for forty dollars a season, you can be a member and help support what we do. And in exchange, you get invites to screenings. So we typically say the screening starts around my birthday, which was like September twentieth, and mm-hmm. then it goes until it goes a full year from there. So the earlier you join to become a member, the more benefit you get from the membership. But um, you know, it's ongoing, and you know, I think a couple years ago I made a list of all the films. I think it's like we're up to like two hundred and fifty movies that we've that I've like screen not just counting promoted like other like there's always a free movie screening or something i'm sending a blast out go see this go see that go mm-hmm. support that but literally curating it's over 250 movies is pretty much at least one film a month for the last 15 years so so you know that's that's you know that's what i look at and you know so we want to celebrate that and point people in the right direction because there's a lot of stuff you know, there may be lots, lots of things for you to choose from, but you still have the same 24 hours in a day. So, hopefully, whenever you see our logo, it means that it's worth your time, whatever time that takes to experience it. I hear you. Um, you know, you you mentioned um, doing, uh, you know, work with WURD, with mm-hmm. Stephanie Renee, and what have you. Um, you know, I mean. You know, as I just said, man, you've been mm-hmm. grinding for a minute, but diversity and, and spreading mm-hmm. yourself around and, and delving into radio and things like that. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the radio thing, it just came like, you know, uh, about what, four years ago, my grandmother passed and I, I was broke <laughs> and I was like, OK. Um, and people were like, hey, you, you know so much, you should be sharing it more. And I said, well, I'm really shy. So, I mean, having the opportunity to be on the radio every week is really uh, boosted my confidence and, and given me a platform, you know, like between the YouTube and the radio, you know, there are a lot of people, I think that as we talk more about diversity, there are also a lot of people that really care about blackness and they want to see and they need to see themselves reflected in uh, film and culture, you know, and not just the gully stuff, but really the quality stuff, you know, so that, that's why I appreciate what you do. I mean, you, you know, just just reinforcing quality you know not everything sometimes you got to wait for the picture to develop you know like you get the polaroid so the instant stuff you know you can eat the instant grits you can eat the instant oatmeal but it's it's better when it takes its time and and sometimes things take a little while to develop so uh yeah i mean so the radio is just a way like okay so you know i have a i don't i don't necessarily want to teach but i want to have that option mm-hmm. down the road so i think uh, also this year we're, we're going to have a book out i work with this uh with charles woods he's he's on um he did we do a, pl- a podcast together we're going to write we're just going to get it down i mean this is one of those things where i think things need to change things are changing um more people have the power and resources to be able to tell our stories which is important but if it's not directed in some sort of energy, positive energy, we're going to get a lot of random stuff, you know. And I guess uh, it's sort of like, you know, you, you, you know, music-wise, when synthesizers came in, mm. you know, like for every Prince and Stevie Wonder, a lot of people just fooling around, making garbage, noisy stuff that does not stand the test of time. And, and that's something that we want to... Now that the technology is such that we can all create our own films and tell our own stories, hopefully, you know, uh, I can use wh- whatever space I have to let people know, well, this is what's happened before within the culture. And this is th- this is a way that you can sort of empower people and, you know, make, make things better, make, make culture better through, uh, through telling our stories. No, your work is important. Um I, I want to pause. We're going to take care of, of uh, jump into a piece of music. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when we come back as we, uh, you know, start to wrap up, man, I'd, I'd like for you to, to talk uh, maybe to, you know, those folks that, that have uh, interest in making film or maybe some mm-hmm. of those same folks, you know, 
that are out there trying to do it and like to maybe take it to an, another step, an, another level. Because, oh, yeah. I mean, people can do incredible things with their phones these days. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. So, it's so one one thing that I learned. You know, save it. Save it. Save it. All okay. right. Well, so, we're, we're going, going jump to jump into music no, and hold on to go, that. We're going to go into who's, who's, who's playing this next well, song. Well, from the Philadelphia, you know, one of the, the first families of... of this genre known as jazz in Philadelphia, Robin Eubanks. Oh, wow. Philadelphia Zone. So okay. you want to do the honors? Well, well first off, uh, rest in peace, Bunny Sigler. But, yeah, I mean, next up we have, if you're listening to WRTI with J. Michael Harrison, next up, a great tune from Robin Eubanks, part of Philly's first family. Right here on WRTI 90.1. We're back and we are chatting with uh, Mr. Michael Dennis from Real Black. And he's uh, been gracious enough to join us in the studio and share a little insight to uh, the 15th anniversary of, of what he's uh, been bringing forth. Well, I'm humbled. I mean, thank you for giving me the time. I, you know, um, yeah, we, I mean, we go way back. I mean, time is going to keep moving, right? So do do what you love and try and try and plant some seeds i guess is is what we're talking about yeah, yeah. uh you know so yeah i mean i hope i hope people continue to support you and come out saturday i'm definitely going to be there Painted october Bride. the 14th and the 13th the hopefully Bride people Art come Center. out to so they can they can you know well you know and also i, I want to give a quick shout out you know you mentioned the uh, legendary Bunny Sigler, yeah. um, but also, you know, a cat that uh, a lot of people <laughs> who frequent jazz performances around Philadelphia mm -hmm. um, has seen this guy, but you may not know his his name. And, you know, you've probably, um, you know, seen me or somebody else speaking to him or what have you. But Taliba, you know, a.k.a. Carter Walls, um, who, uh, again, uh, was a, 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 a passionate about the music and a supporter of the music and I mean he would record the show and, and call me like three weeks later well, you played something three <laughs> weeks ago that you know I didn't, couldn't make out the title I recorded it but you know what was it that you played by this person and that person but he was just uh, you know one of those cats that I you know I think uh, his energy you mm -hmm. know uh, is part of that foundation that keeps the, the music going forward he's one of those guys that you know, um, mm -hmm. even uh, up in age, uh, just continued to find ways to go up to New York and check out the music. You know, mm -hmm. in Philadelphia, supporting the music, in New Jersey, supporting the music. And uh, he passed away recently. Yeah, and there's uh, actually uh, going to be a memorial that is uh, taking place um, over in New Jersey. I'll give some more information about that next week. But Mike is happening with his event um, Friday evening the 13th of October, the location once again. The bank building at the corner of 38th and Lancaster. And, and the second Fridays of every month. So this month we're doing a, a tribute to Dick Gregory. We're going to show Sweet Love Bitter, which is his only starring role. Where he, and the reason I'm here, I ran into one, one of your listeners uh, at the Herbie Hancock show. I was with, with Stephanie there, and uh, she suggests I, I, I reach out. The, I mean, it's a great film. I mean, for people who love jazz, Mal Waldron did the soundtrack. It was highly sought after soundtrack LP, Impulse Records, and you know, I think uh, you know, it's one of the earliest films. I think Man Called Adam might be right before that. That really shows sort of a, a truthful, so 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 called depiction of jazz life or jazz characters. I mean, you know, yeah, maybe so then, Paris Blues before that. But. And on, on you know, several levels. One, uh, just the nostalgia mm -hmm. um, associated with it, the only starring role for for Dick Gregory, the, mm -hmm. the recently deceased uh, Dick Gregory. Um, you know, the Charlie Parker connection, yeah. you know, associated with the film, and, and a rare film in many respects as well. You yeah. Know, and you don't you don't hear a lot about this film. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was, lo it was lost for a long time. Uh, you know, I think Rhapsody Films put it out maybe 20 years ago. It was rediscovered. But uh, uh, bicker, but you know before that it was it was it ba ba barely released. I mean, I was talking to Woody about it. Uh, it didn't make money. There was a big issue with the producers, and they recut the film and put it out a, an exploitation film called "It Won't Rub Off, Baby." Wow. You know, so when it was finally rediscovered and, and restored as "Sweet Love Bitter," that was a huge thing for uh, jazz filmmaker, jazz film aficionados. And, uh, you know, it's, it's still kind of undercover. It's not really widely available. Mm -hmm. But, again, you know, the, what makes our night special is we have all these rare interviews that are only yeah. exist in 
the real black vault. So the, the only chance to see those things uh, are going to be at our event. And things get started around what time? 7.15, because we are on CP time. <laughs> I, I tried 7 o'clock. I tried telling people 7. It, it just wasn't working. Work so out. usually, usually if you're there by 7.30, you know, you, you won't miss anything. So 7.15-ish. Well, you know, we we go, we're guided by the sun. We don't okay. we don't necessarily all right. pay attention to okay. all the, all these. Uh, I see where you're at with it, Michael. Well, you know, it's just I I, I tried for a long time <laughs> <laughs> to be punctual. <laughs> you saw you saw how I rolled up at the end of the night. <laughs> it just didn't develop. I'm always I'm like five minutes off everything. I'll be five minutes late. For my so funeral. just just to run that down. So again. 7:15 ish on Friday. Ish, yeah, right, you know, darkish. <laughs> and then on 38th of Lancaster. On pay what you want. Come have fun with us. And, and if folks want to find out more, Real Black R E E L B L A C K, and it's at Real Black. If you just Google it, you'll find me, and you'll see what we're up to. So. Um, on Saturday, I believe from two to four, there's a memorial for Taliba Carter Walls, and mm-hmm. as I said, I have some more information about that on next Friday so you can check Mike out on Mm -hmm. on Friday and then on Saturday go to the memorial in New Jersey for Taliba and then Saturday night come back across the bridge and 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 be at the Pain of Pride so it's it's a perfect weekend if you my my just just filled up there you go you know what I mean (laughs) plenty to do well anyway I'll just give it like I know I know you're about to play some more like great jazz music (laughs) um but yeah I mean just advice I mean I just support one another you know there's there's all kinds of lanes available you know if you just want to make stuff and share it on YouTube or if you have higher aspirations Philly is a huge seat for talent both you know acting talent and musical talent you know that's that's how I got in just just following Black Lilies and just making movies about people I, I really respected and admired that had talent uh, and 15 years later is a nice body of work and that I'm I'm proud of and and uh, you know the hope is that uh, if you come to our events you know I'm always at the events so talk to me hopefully network there's so many other things uh, Philly Cam Scribe Video Center uh, you know, you have uh, you know so many so many places. David O, Councilman Black Film Advisory Committee. There's some there's so many means of support. It frustrates me when people feel like they have to be like doing everything themselves and and that they that they're all and I look around and everybody's in their own corner doing the exact same thing and it's sort of like somebody just needs to flick a light on and say hey let's work together let's make this a movement let's. Let's grow this thing. So yeah, well, I think it's important that you get that out there because you know I think there's you know folks who have aspirations and interests that you know may be you know somewhat um, apprehensive um, mm-hmm. because you know to a certain extent when you know I look at the film industry it's almost like a cult you know mm-hmm. what I mean so you know even though you're more grassroots it's still you know for someone on the outside well you be know, I think somewhat realistic you know, I mean you never know like people like five years ago like Issa Rae was just making YouTube videos and now she's got the hottest show on HBO mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so so it can be done it's just you have to figure out what the price is that you want to pay to get certain places so Issa she was in LA so mm-hmm. it makes it a lot easier if you're in Philly and you have those same aspirations you, you it may be a longer you might not have that pole position the same way but I think talent always trumps everything but so. but again having a, a network of folks that you can reach out to and bounce I, absolutely I think it's, it's growing I mean Jamal Hill is killing it you know as far as black independent filmmakers he's one of the most prolific people he's based here in philly he's done like five or six movies in the last five ten years now and um with charlie mack i mean there are a lot of people that that you know even if you know it's i think the biggest difficulty for if you're talking about black folks it's just being able to work for free and invest the time you know like a lot of you know like like a lot of people they just kind of want to get the job they're they're kind of conditioned to think that they should be getting paid on their first thing and and it really is about networking and building relationships so you know again i I don't know if i'm the best candidate being punctual showing up delivering what you're what you promise and and over time you build relationships like we've we've known each other 15 years yeah 
Yeah. So, and I think that that's that's the key. And, and we, but but again, somebody's got to flick that light on so we can all see what we're doing and we can build that trust. We don't have that same sort of mentality that of distrust where we can't vouch for one another and mm-hmm. things. And that that comes from creating opportunities and providing work for one another. So. So, you know, hopefully that, that's going to be something that you'll see more from, from Real Black in the next year, too, creating more opportunities for other people to learn things and, and gain experience. Uh, outstanding. Well, I appreciate you. And, and again, congratulations. Um, we, I think, I, I'm not sure if we mentioned it coming back that we heard music from... Robin Eubanks. <laughs> from Part his new, newest CD titled uh, More Than Meets the Ear. We heard the title track, Robin Eubanks and His Mass Line big band right here on WRTI 90.1 Mike great to see you man absolutely I appreciate the time and and, um, yeah uh, I'll I'll, I'll look forward to hearing more music tonight hopefully hopefully people are like in their jazz mood (laughs) we're going to put them in it if they're not um, and and, uh, you know hopefully uh, you can make it out on the 14th oh definitely be there yeah yeah uh, this is your classical and jazz station. Member supported WRNTI and WRNTI.org in Philadelphia at 90.1 FM. You can find us in Ocean City and Atlantic City at 91.3 FM. We're new to Lancaster now at 106.3 FM. Those of you in the Wilmington, Delaware area can find us at 107.7 FM. There's 24 hour all classical and all jazz streams available online at WRNTI.org. Please, if you haven't done it yet, consider liking us on Facebook at WRTI Music. Uh, we, we heard music most recently from a Philadelphia cat. We're going to hear some more music from another Philadelphia cat who's going to be here later on this year at South. His name is Papo Vasquez, the great trombonist Papo, right here on WRTI 90.1. Thanks again, Mike. Dennis. Yes, thank you, Mike. All right, man. Well, that was fun. You got a lot to say, man. Huh? Me? You got a lot to say, bro. Uh, you've accumulated a, enough that you can uh, you can say a whole lot, and that's a good thing.